So welcome back. Here we are again, another afternoon and a chance to hear somebody very, very special to me share something good. The guy who's sharing the screen, his name is Joe Mullings. I met Joe Mullings online and don't go let your brain get nuts with that. We swipe met, left, swipe right. <laughs> Uh, he is one of the five people that I hang out with. He has influenced my life more than any other person in social media. I love this guy. He's a friend. He's a serial entrepreneur. He is going to share with you something good. Take it away, Joe Mullins. Thank you, Steve. That, <laughs> that, that, that's a really high bar and high honors because influencing you uh, online, I mean, I, I think you've crushed it as well as any entrepreneur I personally know. There are people who play on the LinkedIn platform and there are people who play the LinkedIn platform and, and you do play the LinkedIn platform extraordinarily well. So I'll take that uh, intro all the way home. I appreciate that. And uh, Well, it's true. The way I found you was you were putting out content way before I think anybody even understood what the value of content was. And I'll never forget it. It was one video where you spoke specifically about how the verbiage and how we treat the recruiting game. And every company I deal with is recruiting salespeople all the time. You did it in a black and a whiteboard. Boom, boom, boom. Here are the changes. I went like I got hit by lightning. So uh, share with my audience, you know, what you do. I know you do a lot now. Everybody's going to follow you after that, but you know, in short order, tell them what you do and then sort of why it's so unique and all that stuff. Sure. So I am uh, chairman and CEO of the TMG companies. Uh, that started about 30 years ago as uh, a talent acquisition company, talent access company, headhunting company. And we specialize in med tech and life science. And over that time, we became the number one search firm in the world, just based on pure revenue as well as pure placements. Uh, about five or six years ago, and I've had a history of, uh, I've uh, had one of the bigger mixed martial art teams, fighters in the UFC, especially at the 155 range. I had a, one of the largest uh, mixed martial arts, uh, also uh, gyms in the South Florida area called the Armory. Those uh, that are local will know the name of that. Um, so I've always been a serial entrepreneur, but about five and a half years ago, I had a big contract with Google and Johnson & Johnson and had to come up with a way to bring in 300 plus super high level uh, thought leaders, engineers, PhDs in the Bay Area. There was no way I was gonna pull that off in the old analog way, one phone call, one point of influence. And uh, we came up with a social strategy. And at that time, I don't believe LinkedIn had video on the platform. We were probably one of, if not the first, deploying video on LinkedIn and we started storytelling. I uh, hired two young college kids with one camera, and uh, I started digitally telling stories about brands, about a hiring narrative for clients. And that, hi hi that client happened to be Google and Johnson & Johnson, two you know, anchor clients. And from that, we've grown into a 12-person, multi-million dollar production company that has created a weapon that allows me to point it at all of my businesses. Now, I mentioned in the beginning TMG companies, so we now have a brand building business for clients. Uh, Steve and I actually have lost, uh, launched First Movers Group, but it's been delayed now with the COVID thing. Uh, we've got our search business. Uh, we've got a consulting business uh, that services the life science industry. But when you can take the ability to create content, high quality content with fantastic messaging that generally educates, informs, and inspires, especially on LinkedIn, you now have a weapon to reach people viscerally as well as at scale. So I think that's how I would encompass all of the TMG companies. Yeah, I think you do a good job of, of telling that narrative because one overlaps another, overlaps another, but there is a common theme that you are willing to put yourself in front of all of it and say, this is me, like it or not, this is genuinely me. I mean, I happen to think you're a really interesting guy some people may not, but who cares? <laughs> Nobody likes that's why they make either. that's why they make the scroll button, bro. I mean, you know, <laughs> every once in a while I'll get somebody bash on me. It's funny, you'll you get thousands of people who will throw you kudos, but you only remember the one person 
who was like, dude, what's your issue with putting your picture up all the time? And that's the one that keeps you up all night. Meanwhile, the thousands of other people are throwing cred your way. You're like, what? And then, you know, I always feel sorry for them. Like, gosh, you must have a miserable life to type on your keyboard, stop and hate me at a distance and then go on with your day. So yeah, look, I'm just me. Who is it? Rodman, 50% of the people hate me, 50% love me. It's probably not yeah. even 50 that love me. Yeah, it's okay. It's probably not, you know? Not. I mean, what, what I've noticed and what was so attractive to me was being the leader of the company to take um, the under, or first to understand and then to take the action to put your brand in front of all of that because ultimately you were the driver anyway. Mm -hmm. That's, I think, the paradigm shift that people are having. And this pandemic just crushed it into a, a tin can and said, oh holy shit, I gotta get in. And like my phone and my social media blew up because everybody's going, all right, now we know what you were talking about. We gotta Look, do it. Look, branding is so important. Brand, reputation, whichever you wanna call it, is so important. And the number one rule with marketing is strong brands come out of recessions and depressions first and strongest. So that's that's that that's really important to understand. And the other side is, is right now, um, if you do buy, right, you do spend on social, it's the lowest cost of all time for the most eyes. So if you did want to do ad spend, whether it was you know pre-roll on YouTube or Facebook or Insta, the numbers are so low. So you're having the most eyes on you and the algorithm's so low because people aren't spending, which drives the algorithm. It's, it's a perfect storm. Yeah, so well, share with the audience a little bit of your journey, how you decided to do that. Mm -hmm. And then, I mean, you've traveled all over the globe. You have created content that's better than half of the shit I see on TV. Yeah. <laughs> you know, when I'm watching Netflix, I'm going, mm, I'm gonna watch any one of the shows that you've produced because they're real, they're genuine, yeah. they're educational, yeah. uh, they're inspiring, they're mysterious. I mean, you know, so yeah. talk to me about the journey or talk to us about the journey because you were not that good to start with. Um, you just start somewhere, you get better. And so from your one camera to full production, you know, how does that happen? Um, well, look, you. Everything you're great at today, you once sucked at. So that's one of my oh, favorite what lines. A great line. What right? a great line. So Robert. you need to get over that right away. Um, <laughs> so the show that you're referring to, one of the shows is called True Future, and you can find us on truefuture.tv. And we travel the world uh, exploring technologies that especially index ta towards medical device and life science. Israel, Germany, Germany Ireland, uh, Miami, Flagstaff, California, uh, uh, we got Singapore on the docket. And what we do is we go explore the people, places, and tech, and these entrepreneurs and inventors that are creating these surgical robotics, machine learning, data analytics, all the things that are saving people's lives today in the COVID. And suddenly, you know, we happen to be in the right place at the right time. So we started out, uh, the very first day I had the idea about doing the content, I bought a Sony camera, I set it up in my home office, uh, at my house, and um, I made a video. I was all excited. I ran inside after I downloaded it on my laptop, showed it to my wife, and my wife goes, you look like a moron. <laughs> I said, what are you talking about? That was good. And so she said, listen, your nephew just graduated from Massachusetts Institute of you know, Film or whatever it was, call him up. So I called him up and you know, I brought him in at the time. They did a great job, you know. He and uh, one of his uh, classmates, they did a fantastic job for the first year and a half. But then I knew, you know, you can't unsee what you see. And, you know, we're living in a world of media. Uh, whether you like it or not, it's the world we're in. You don't have to agree with it. You just have to acknowledge that it is by far the most powerful tool you can own, which is why governments who take over countries take the radio station over, which is why elections are influenced by other countries, presidential elections. Media rules how you think and what you think about. So if you just play that back, why would you not direct that at your business model? And again, as long as you're using your superpowers for good, which what media is, it's totally cool. So we went and uh, for a little while, we, we played with uh, 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 that, that smaller crew and I just went, I pushed all the chips to the middle of the table. And now we have probably one of the 
biggest all-in production companies in South Florida in regards to footprint, talent, resumes, gear. Uh, you know, you, Steve, you've been in my studios. We've got two big studios. We've got- Yeah, uh, fascinating. From the ground up, from vision to execution has been fascinating. I think for me, one of the best takeaways where, and you and I have very different strategies about how we go about, you know, achieving success in social media, which is made for a great partnership. But, you know, one of the great takeaways from all the traveling you did was that some of these people who ha are made CEOs of those companies you talked about, they do other shit that's really cool. You know, that they as people, yeah. you know, I think one guy was making beer. Yeah, it was uh, actually, yeah, he uh, he owned it up, opened up his own brewery and Nate uh, and, and, and Flagstaff, right? And that endeared me more to him as a leader mm -hmm. than the whole tech thing mm -hmm. that he was doing. And so when you uncover who people are, you with your martial arts background, you are the most disciplined guy I know. I think that's what we liked about each other is that you know when we go to work, we go to work. Yeah. And as we shift to talking about what's gone on the last six, eight weeks, this shocked the shit out of people. Mm -hmm. I think this was a real wake up call. You've shared with me that some of your businesses are having the best months they've ever had. Mm -hmm. And I said, how does that happen? Mm -hmm. uh, share with the audience what, what that, how does that happen? Oh, God, you know what? So it's, it's building a business on a good foundation. Um, you know, I'm about, you, you pointed it out, I'm about discipline. Uh, to me, discipline is freedom because I don't have I don't have to worry about repositioning ourselves. If the North Star was sound to begin with, um, this is if you think about it like a nine inning game. This is one pitch in a nine inning game. What we're going through right now, and I don't mean to minimize the people who have passed or the people who have been sick, but in the scope of business. This is one pitch in a nine inning game. And if you had developed your organization properly, if you had the right partners in your organization, accountants, bankers, lawyers, and partners, teammates, and you realize that you're just gonna have to manage through this, and sure, did I batten down the hatches the first 30, 60 days? 100%. I cut my spend, I called all my partners, I said, listen, we're gonna, we're gonna meter everything back. But we didn't switch from our deliverables, what we did is we shifted certain things forward. As you pointed out, I'm 30 years in this one business. We're having, I think, our third best month ever um, in this climate. Uh, we've brought on, we've launched two brand new products for my business. Uh, we haven't gone into defense or heels at all. We are, we're in attack mode all the time. We're, we hired two new people. Um, I took on a chief vision officer role with the third largest search firm in the world. Um, and we're just moving forward. So it's discipline, Steve. It's I'm waking up an extra half hour earlier. I'm staying at the office later. So instead of waking up at four, I'm getting up at 3.30 now. And, and, and I'm staying up at the office till 6.30 or seven, right? And it's pleasurable for me. It's not work. So, and my teammates are all here. And we're well, the I, North I Star. The you, you bring up the partnership and because I, I know the culture there everybody's committed to the end game. Yeah. And so culturally, you know, when you get hit, you stay together as a team, you could be strong. And yeah. so I know you actually did a post where, and your writing is spectacular right. as well. I, I will tell you that you do more flat out, you know, pure writing posts than anybody I know, but you thanked the, the, the team of people you thanked your banker, you thanked your accountant, who I know Michael Daskal, you thanked your lawyer, I know Bob White. Mm -hmm. And I was like, look at this guy. Mm -hmm. You know, everybody else is running scared and you're like going, hey, I thank you, I got the right team. It's really, uh, you know, reminiscent of any challenge, of any, you know, when, when you get hit, you gotta be able to take the hits. Look, this is, these are the moments where, um, Whenever I hire somebody to be a teammate of mine, I always think about them. I'm in a foxhole. Ammunition is gone. We've gone to bayonets. And am I going to have my six, nine, three covered? And that's how I hire. And, and that pays off when you get in that foxhole moment. 
And that, you know, one of the key things you can do is constantly think of foxhole moments. You're not going to love each other in that foxhole. But when you go to bayonets, that is when you can come out and you can crush a one pitch out of a nine inning game where it's just like, uh, you know, I know that in the in the ramp up to us getting to know each other, like I said, we met through LinkedIn, we, we physicalized it, we wound up having a cup of coffee that led to more uh, understanding mutual respect. But one of the things that we took away from each other, and I'm sort of putting words in your mouth was that I knew you would work as hard or harder than me, it would never be, I got to worry about you like taking a pass mm -hmm. oh you're gonna run that thing and i'm just gonna autopilot mm -hmm. um i think that's what people are seeing now the qualities of their teammates that are either standing up or running away yeah. you know and, and so I, I i think to your point you've built that structure it's fun to be in, in and around your organization it's colorful it's it's great and so you know um i, I obviously i'm a big fan um what what else would you share with the audience specifically about, you know, what's going on in this world. Cause it looks like we're starting to unwrap a little bit. Some things are going to open, but there's really no normal ever. There was never a normal for me. People say I get up at three o'clock, dude, you're not normal. I go, that's what makes me successful. Yeah. Um, yeah. What, what's in your mind? What does the world look like 90 days from now? You know, so I always, you mentioned it, normal, by whose definition, right? So, right. Um, you know, and, and, and no judgment zone anywhere. You know, if you want to wake up at 10 and, you know, drink beers till 10 at night, that's cool. Just don't bitch when you're not playing the same <laughs> game as somebody who's not doing that. Um, so, look, you know, I, I put out a piece about a week and a half ago. You can go look on my LinkedIn page. It's a rant. We call it Untitled Unfiltered. Uh, you can go on my uh, uh, YouTube page. And, like, nobody's coming to save you. Nobody. The government's not coming to save you. Your mom's not coming to save you. So let's take both extremes. The only, <laughs> the only people that are going to save you are the people in your foxhole and you. And so if you're waiting for that check, if you're waiting for that PPP loan, if you're waiting for somebody to tell you when to put the mask on and when to put the mask off, you're going to be, always be living by somebody who doesn't even know that you're alive. So don't wow. forget that. The, 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 the gentleman who's standing on the podium at five o'clock every day on the news has no idea you're alive. And if you're sitting there taking your direction from him and whoever it is, you're making a huge mistake. So that's number one. I'm not saying disrespect the message that comes out, but if you're waiting for that to be your savior, you're gonna have issues. You know, 90 days from now, as a businessman, here's the moves I'm making. I don't think uh, travel is gonna be the same ever again, uh, especially for the rest of 2020. But Let's assume never again, because again, if you're waiting for it to get back to regular, you're going to fumble the opportunity between June 1st and December 31st. Um, I would up my game on uh, telepresence. I would not only work out of a camera on the other side of a laptop. We show up, you're a very sharp dresser. We show up with certain jackets on because we want a presence when we walk in. We pick a certain shoe, a certain pen, we arrive a certain way in front of a customer. Think about how you're arriving in front of a customer. If you can go to a $5,000 4K camera with a high-end backdrop, I will promise you that will leave a mark, a positive one, when they are evaluating whether or not to give you business. And you do it everywhere else. Why would you not do it in that face-to-face? -face? So that's number one. You're going to save a lot of money on trains, cars, planes. Invest in a really nice home studio audio and video, because it's going to be your carrier probably for the rest of your business career. So that's number one. Number two is if you wake up an extra hour and a half early in the morning, and I'm, I'm assuming we're talking to entrepreneurs here, um, and, and right, so that's who this audience is. I get people who say, work's not my life. I feel sorry for you that you get up at four. I'm like, hon, don't feel sorry for me. I'm quite happy, really, trust me. <laughs> you know, I know my sport. Um, you know, nobody feels sorry for Michael Jordan when he practiced all those insane hours, yet they feel sorry for entrepreneurs who work all those hours. It's the same game. Hunt. So, you know, get up an extra half hour early, work an extra two hours at the end of the day. And so you're going to find massive opportunities there. If you unwind every big deal you ever did, every big deal, 
you ran across that deal by accident. More accidents occur when you increase your time on the field. Wow. Wow. That's, I mean, listen, I know you a long time. That one's a, a grand slam. Wow. That's, true, though. I love the you talk now. I just love it. It's true. One, it's so right. Woo. That's true. If it's true. And, I can tell you that you, I call it stepping shit. You know, you just get lucky, man. But you make your own luck by being out there on the field. That's brilliant. Brilliant. It's well, true. It's true. And then, so that's it. Look, how you show up in front of your customer. You're not going to be able to do it on a plane. You're not going to be able to get in person, at least for the next 90 days. Nobody wants to see you, even if they're as handsome as you. You're not walking into anybody's <laughs> office. So how are you going to show up? And then what are you going to do to add extra hours on the field to have that mistake happen again for you to turn that big deal? Those are my two takeaways for you. You are absolutely brilliant. You know, you and I could talk for hours to validate that last comment. I got hired by a, a CEO of a large sports marketing company based in New York because he was watching LinkedIn for the last two weeks and I wore a blazer every morning. He goes, I need this guy in my life. And uh, I think my audience needs you in their life. You're a breath of fresh air, you're unique. I love everything about what you're doing. Keep on doing it. Thank you for stopping the trains to spend some time with us. We'll pick up our business when, when the time is appropriate, but uh, there's lots of good things. Stay healthy, stay safe, and most of all, thanks for being on the ball. Thanks, Steve. Love you, buddy, and uh, thanks for Be all well. you put out. Thank you, brother. Be well.